Hi everyone, Spider-Man 1991 here to do my comic reviews for the week of July 24th, 2013. Um, I'm sorry this video's late. Um, I'm actually filming this on Saturday night. Uh, good news is I just saw The Wolverine, so I'll be posting a review of that movie. Uh, probably, uh, probably film the review next day. Right now it's really late, um, but and I didn't get to the comic book review this week because I've been pretty busy with work, so. Uh, so now I'm doing it now, and hopefully it'll be up on Sunday. Okay, so starting off from Dynamite Comics, we have The Green Hornet by Mark Wade, issue four. Um, Cato discovers who the voice is, the real culprit who is the voice, and unfortunately he delivers it, he delivers the evidence right during Britt Reed's uh, big press conference, and and it's pretty much ruins Britt's not only his chances of being mayor, but it but it practically ruins his reputation as a newspaper publisher too. So, not looking too good for Britt Reed. And um, also on the last page, it does reveal who who the true mastermind behind the whole voice situation was. Okay, um, I thought this was a great issue. Um, you know, I had it had a lot of stuff that was revealed in it uh you know and also the way also how things are different now between the hornet and kato i mean kato he kind of doesn't want he thinks brit reed's really going down this dark path and and let me just say that this issue does not make brit brit reed look like a good guy at all he does i mean the way the way he i mean the way it happens you think that he's just kind of a kind of a I mean, he, he, I mean, not really a dick, but he's just not really that positive, that much of a good person you'd want to be a mayor or, you know, all, all that stuff. Like, it really does, it really does kind of turn your, I mean, it kind of makes you believe in what the public's believing right now, which is that Britt Reed's a terrible guy, and, um, and, and also, this is a good superhero con, also, um, I would also say that this comic is good for people who want to read comics and they like crime and they like stuff about crime but they don't really like all the superheroes and the super villains and stuff. I mean this is just pretty much like good pulp uh, crime, crime stories that are just great. Um, it's very down to earth. Uh, I'd recommend it if you don't if you want to read comic books but and you like crime fighting but not with superheroes. So yeah, I, I'd say Green Horn number four by Mark Wade definitely buy, especially if you like Mark Wade's work on Daredevil. Okay, now moving on to DC Comics, Aquaman number twenty-two. Aquaman finally confronts the first the dead uh, the dead king, and during this fight, Aquaman learns that apparently he that the, his ancestors actually stole the Atlantean throne from this from this uh, first king or whatever. And also, apparently, he's after Aquaman's wife Mera frees all the Zebelians from their ice prison that the Dead King put him in last issue. They just immediately swear loyalty to the Dead King, and that's what happens in the issue. Um, oh yeah, also uh, some other stuff. Scavenger has invaded Atlantis, and now Tula and Merc, uh, two Atlantean guards who have a loyalty to Ocean Master, uh, make their way to his prison on the surface. Okay, Aquaman. Well, I really do want... I think this issue, the revelation that Aquaman isn't... Uh, of what I think true Atlantean royal blood... I think it does... I think it's great. I think it proves that Jeff Johns is really changing the game with Aquaman here. I mean, before Jeff took on the title... Uh, I mean, once Jeff Johns started writing Aquaman, his own series, we got a few revelations about a number of things, like how... Aquaman's telepathic link with the fish, how Aquaman gets the fish to do stuff for him is really more of mind control rather than just he te rather than just talking with them and also uh, the stuff with Ocean, Ma Ocean Master and Aquaman how he thought of it, those uh, and those Atlantean battle planes back in uh, war war with Atlant war with Atlantis. Um, yeah, uh, and again the revelation here that Aquaman's Ancestors aren't really of royal, true Atlantean blood. Uh, I think that was a great revelation for the issue. Um, I can't wait to see what happens next issue when uh, Aquaman learns this and what's he, what's he going to do? Is he going to take out the Dead King? How's that going to work out? Um, 
Yeah, but um, a lot of, the issue before this though was pretty slow, and I didn't wasn't really a fan. But I think it's been redeemed with this issue. It's a lot of action, very great. Um, pretty much approves why I like uh, the Aquaman series series ever since Jeff Johns brought it back. So uh, yeah, uh, hi, Aquaman number twenty two definitely recommend it. Okay, now Flash number 22. The Flash finally confronts the reverse Flash. Um, after delivering a suit made that similar to his armor because Flash figures out that the reason the reverse Flash isn't coming after him is because he can't find him. So he decides to make a similar suit for, to, for Iris West because other than the Flash, she's the only person who was among the Speed Force victims that's still around. And so he, he makes a suit to keep Iris safe. Then he goes and finds the, and he's able to track the reverse flash down, who's absorbing energy from a speed force battery that was kept by Dr. Elias. And Flash is up to fight the reverse flash, and they fight, and the issue ends with uh, the reverse flash pinning Flash up against a wall. Okay, um, Flash number 22, definitely a buy. Um, I like. I still like how we have no real clue about who the Reverse Flash is yet because when I was reading this issue and I completely forgot about Dr. Elias up until I started reading this issue because when we got to his scene where he just makes his way down to his Speed Force battery I suddenly remembered who this guy was and how he hates how he wants to stop the Flash I'm like wait he could be the Reverse Flash in this he could be but then we cut to the reverse flash showing up and absorbing the speed force battery, so there goes that theory. But man, um, so far the reverse flash story arc has been great on this. Um, very great, very nice. I mean, the reverse flash is my favorite villain of the Flash's rogues, so I'm lo naturally I'm loving this story arc. Um, I would recommend if you love the reverse flash, then you should give this story a shot. Um, I'd say right now at this point, if you can track down the we're on the third part, so get the first two titles, get the first issues uh, 20, 21, and then start reading this one. Otherwise, just wait for the trade. Definitely a buy. Okay. Uh, now it's time for part three of Trinity War in Justice League Dark, number 22. We are halfway through the Trinity War, and in this issue, pretty much... Wonder Woman gets the Justice League Dark involved with this, and right when she gets those guys involved, uh, it leads to a confrontation with Batman and some of the other heroes from the Justice League and the JLA. Uh, they pretty much argue about what to, about where to figure out, about what to do. Wonder Woman wants to find, believes that they could find Pandora. That will lead to everything. Batman doesn't think so. He thinks that the evidence that they should go back and review the evidence because we kind of have a whole. Sci uh, logic versus magic debate going on here and also back in Arcus super there are a few members of the JLA left uh, the JLA kind of splits up in this issue they kind of half goes with Batman and some of the other Justice League to deal with Wonder Woman and the JLD while the others uh, hang back at Argus to make sure everything's alright with Superman who's being contained um, pretty much uh, eventually, all the heroes just pretty much break into three teams. That's what happens in this issue, and each team and each team is kind of like led by each member of the DC Trinity. Uh, Wonder Woman's team go decides to try to track down Pandora. Batman's team, with the help of the Phantom Stranger, decides to invent decides to review the evidence, and the Phantom Stranger r recommends they check back with Doctor Light, and the and Superman's team who's at the end of Just, Just League of America number six, was visited by the Question, who gives Superman some uh, news article saying that a supervillain named Doctor Psycho was in contact a few days ago, and pretty much, and pretty much Superman believes that's what probably led to him losing control. And so they, and so he, and so Superman and the remaining heroes at Argus go, go to follow the Question's lead. And interesting enough. It, and it's kind of cool how each, how all the heroes kind of break up into three teams, and not only is each team lead, sort of led by a member of the DC Trinity, but also each team is sort of involved with a member of the Trinity of Sin in the New Fifty, in the New Fifty Two, 
or what well, rather influenced or motivated by one of the members. Superman, the qu Superman's team has the questions. Batman's team has the Phantom Stranger, and Wonder Woman's team, Pandora. Very nice. I we're halfway through right now. We're halfway through Trinity War, so you know, um, pretty much just go back and read. At this point, just go back and read Justice League number twenty-two, Justice League of America number six, and just this week, Justice League Dark number twenty-two. Trinity War so far has been amazing. Very great team team up between the Justice Leagues. Like how they're all kind of like splitting up into three things and how it's each each Trinity is kind of influence, influencing one team. Very very great. I highly recommend giving this story arc a shot. shot. This is the best. So far I think this is, has been the ju best uh, Justice League uh, story arc in years. Well, not really years, but in a while. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. All right, now it's time for Marvel. Starting off with Captain America number nine. Uh, basically, Sharon Carter saves Steve. Then they go find Jezebel Jet, and while Sharon and Jet free free the rest of the Franks, uh, Steve basically goes all out in a fight against Armin Zola, and and it basically ends with Steve nearly be, beating Zola near to de practically to death, except he doesn't kill Zola. And right when Jet Jet goes to make some last words with, with her father. Um, two mutates try to crush Jet for betraying Zola, and fortunately Zola, put, with his last breath of life, pushes her out of the way, and he dies. And that's where the issue ends. Okay, uh, Captain America number nine. Uh, I really. Oh, by the way, the last page of this said to be concluded, so we have one more part left. I really hope that next issue we get out of Dimension Z, alright? I feel like this story arc has been drag... This, we're pretty much on the same story arc since this story since this story began back in number one. I mean, I mean really, it feels like it's been dragged out and I'm glad to see it over. I'm glad because then we can move on to other things and also, I really wish they didn't kill, they didn't kill Ian. I really don't. I do not understand why he had to die. Um, I hate it. And it really doesn't seem like in this issue that he's coming back, which sucks, because I like the kid. And I thought he was good for Steve's character, but fortunately... Oh yeah, also we get the revelation from Sharon Carter that apparently time moves slow in Dimension Z, and it's and Steve has apparently only been, has only been missing for like 30 minutes or, or something, and when really, according to Steve, he's been in Dimension Z for like 10 years. So, yeah, uh, Captain America number 9. Uh, possibly get this when the trade comes out. Um, I'm going to wait till the last issue, give you my full review of the story arc. But right now, um, yeah, not really looking too good, too good for a Rick Remender's start on this title. Okay, um, next up, Scarlet Spider number 19. Wolverine and Kane fight these fight the Assassin's Guild and the and they also fight Contra the Red Death and it ends with Kane lobotomizing her. Pretty much the same way Minimum Carnage ended. Kane lobotomize uses his sneakers to lobotomize the antagonist. That's it. If you pretty much want if you pretty much want to see Kane, the Scarlet Spider and Wolverine go go by Pretty much, if you want to see them, like, go hardcore violent, well, okay, not hardcore, but just, like, total ass kicking on a bunch of ninjas, please, pick this up. But if not, um, I say skip it. Uh, but net, but Scarlet Spider, um, really, I think this title is just more of hit or miss. I mean, if you want a Spider-Man, I'd say if you want a Spider-Man book where you know that the... Well, actually, no. I, I was going to say, if you want a Spider-Man book where you know that the Spider-Hero isn't a supervillain, well, Kane was a villain, so... Well, he's not... Well, he didn't switch buys with the guy guy right before dying, so... Um, anyways, um, yeah, uh, Scarlet Spider, I would say this story arc with involving Wolverine and the Assassin's Guild, skip it. But next issue, number 20, is supposed to be a team-up with the Superior Spider-Man, so that's... Next issue, I'm really looking forward to it. I would probably say the next issue is maybe a buy, but this one, 
Issue 19, skip it. All right, next up, Uncanny Avengers, number 10. Uh, the four horsemen are unleashed on the Uncanny Avengers, who are right now kind of pretty much split off into two sections. Um, <clears throat> and pretty much most of the issue, it's just dealing with the, the horsemen are making their moves and going after particular uh, Avengers. Uh, Banshee is sent after Havoc and the Scarlet Witch. Grim Reaper goes after Wonder Man. Sentry, Thor, and Dawkin is sent after his daddy, Wolverine. And also, while the horsemen are attacking, uh, Captain America and Wasp are are pretty much searching the Himalayas, trying to figure out where the Apocalypse Twins are. When some, when Captain America remembers that more, the message Immortus left him and finally figures out where they are, though that's not revealed to what Captain America thinks they are. And also, during this conversation between uh, what the Captain America has with the Wasp, he also does reference... Uh, the events that, that are currently going on in Captain America with Dimension Z and stuff. Uh, he doesn't go into detail about it, but if you're reading Captain America, you'll know what he's talking about. And I, I thought that was pretty much nice. I mean, Rick Remender is also writing Uncanny Avengers and Captain America, so I think that's pretty cool when a writer who's writing two story, two series at the same time is able to kind of like, like not necessarily cross them over, but just kind of like, you know, mention, mention a passerby here or there. But yeah, um, Uncanny Avengers number ten. So far, so far, I I really don't have I re I'm really not loving this story, but I really don't have anything to complain about it at this at the same time. So I would say for Uncanny Avengers, probably borrow it from a friend if if a friend has it. Uh, otherwise, just wait for the trade. Next up, Young Avengers, number eight. Uh, the Young Avengers are pretty much traveling across the multiverse. We're seeing them in a bunch of different uh, alternate universe scenarios and until they finally track down the fake Patriot into the one place they shouldn't be, which is the home dimension of the parasite known as Mother, which we saw back in the first story, story arc as the took on the form of Teddy's mom, all that stuff. And, of course... And of course, they have pretty much the team tries to get out there quickly. Um, most of them are able to get out. Unfortunately, though, Hulkling and Prodigy are left behind in Mother's dimension. But Prodigy is able to buy them some time. They're able to run away from her. Um, back in the other dimension that the team landed, apparently they're in the same dimension as a girl named Leah, who knows Loki. And uh, this is a sort of a reference to Carrion Gillen's run on Journey into Mystery, because I think. Leah was a support because I immediately because after reading this issue I kind of went online and searched through the Marvel wiki and kind of figured out that she was sort of a supporting character for Kid Loki's story arc during uh, Journey into Mystery so that's good that, again that's kind of good how he's able to reference some previous work so I so with that I am kind of thinking about now reading uh, what happened to Kid Loki into Journey into Mystery but the uh, Back to the book. Um, the last page, there is a, there is kind of a big thing, thing on like the last two pages, pretty much. Um, and spoiler alert here, uh, Hulkling and Prodigy after they escape Mother, Prodigy asks Hulkling like, you know, this could be it for us. Do you have any regrets? And Hulkling says no. And then Prodigy says, yeah, says, uh, yeah, I kind of do. And then Prodigy kisses him. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm really thinking that's a big deal because. Teddy had, cause Hulkling, Teddy, he's been having some doubts about his relationship with Billy, and cause you know, Lo Kid Loki got a mischief. He kind of planted an idea that Te in Teddy's head that Billy may have used his powers to make him fall in love with him because, well, they're both super power, super powered guys. So it, it dating would have been easier to them. So, you know, I, I think. The whole Hulkling Prodigy thing. If it's just done to, if it's handled the right way, this could be something interesting for all three characters. But if it's done just to kind of like stir, just for shock value or stirring the pot, so to speak, then I, I really don't know how, how to feel about it. But I, I just want to see what's going to happen with it. And, you know, if they do meet up with the rest of the team, is Teddy going to tell Billy? Uh, 
But yeah, Young Avengers number eight. Uh, now I'd say Young Avengers has been kind of a, a how should I put this? Uh, sort of a sort of a hit. I'd say this has become like kind of another hit hit or miss title for me. Uh, I'd say like for Young Avengers right now, somewhere in the middle is just if you have a friend is well like uncanny avengers is just if you have a friend who has this i'd say borrow it from them skim it and to decide whether or not you want to get it or not but I, I wouldn't say this is a definite buy it's like a really more of just borrowed from a friend and see if you like it hopefully though for young avengers um i really hope we kind of move past the whole mother parasite thing and get on to some new stuff soon also that they find speed soon, too. <clears throat> Alright, now for the last comic. Superior Spider-Man, number 14. Uh, I think Dr. Octopus has been wa watching Pacific Rim too much because his idea to attack... Because he decides to eradicate Shadowland. And how does he do that? Well, he has a giant spider bot. I I I'm, not, I'm not even making this up. He, he has a giant spider robot... He goes into the middle of Manhattan to take out the Kingpin's fortress, which is Shadowland. And he also has several smaller robots, which are piloted by his... Called Arachnots, which are piloted by his henchmen, known as the Spiderlings. And, of course, the, and fortunately, he, he's also able to make thousands of spider bots to go and protect the civilians and their homes during his assault. And also, when Mayor Jameson calls Spider-Man during the middle of the battle, uh, you know, he says he doesn't have the authority, but Spider-Man is able to blackmail Jameson, and and you know, able and he's able to get Jameson to lay off him. So pretty much, Spider-Man assaults Shadowland. Uh, Kingpin gets away though. Uh, so does the Hobgoblin, mainly because of the protocol, mainly because of the program that the Green Goblin, who we saw in issue ten, put in put in the Spider Bots. And and also and the next day after after the assault, uh, the, the remaining hand ninjas and Fisk and any of Fisk Wilson Fisk's minions are immediately recruited into the Green Goblin's ranks. And apparently now he controls over 52% of organized crime in the city. So yeah, not so it is kind of a victory for the Superior Spider-Man, but at the same time, it's also a victory for the Green Goblin. Alright, uh, Superior Spider-Man number 14, I would say this is a good jump on point for any, I'd say this is a good jump on point. Right now, um, if you haven't been reading Superior Spider-Man, you've had, heard people talk about it, go, oh man, it's awesome. Well, it's true, this is a great comic, and I would say, right now, number 14, it's a good jump on point. Okay, we've got, Spider-Man's got a new costume too. Um, I think, you know, I think it's a good idea that Otto got a new costume for his role as Spider-Man because, well, I have no, com I'm not really, I really have no complaints about the first one, the last one, but it just seemed too similar to the Amazing Spider-Man costume. I mean, this one, it is, yeah, it's still the similar pattern, but it's a little different. It looks a lot more like the, uh, zooming in here, uh, it's kind of, it looks a lot, a little more like the Ben Riley, the Spider-Man costume Ben Riley wore in the 90s, but it also has like four, Four spider, four like extendable spider arms attached to it too, which is, again, because it's Doctor Octopus, he's got thing for the arms. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but another good thing about this story, it, but yeah, the costume it works for it. But another good thing that has me interested in this is, what is Dan Slott gonna do with the Green Goblin? That's my, that's the thing that's going around in my head. I got from this issue because. I really think that once the Goblin makes his move, it's going to be a big one. Okay, he's got he's building up tons of criminals working for him. It's going to be a bit. It's going to be a big thing. I can tell you that right now. Whatever the Goblin's going to do when he makes his move, it's going to be another big event for Spider-Man. Okay, because this is what Dan Slott does. He whatever big thing he's big event he's going to do, he's going to plant hints in it in each of the issues. Um, he planted hints with involving Goblin to lead up to Spider Island. He planted hint uh, stuff with the Sinister Six that led up to the ends of the Earth. Now he's doing the same thing for whatever the Green Goblin's doing. 
Can't wait for that Goblin event. Um, also, but the issue at hand, Superior Spider-Man number 14, definitely a buy. If you can only get one comic this week, I would recommend this one. Okay, and that's it for my comic review this week. Uh, thank you for watching. Quick wrap up. Superior Spider-Man number 14. Great jump on point. Highly recommend it. This is an awesome title from Marvel. Definitely, people should really pick it up. Young Avengers number 8. The Young Avengers continue their trek across the multiverse. Please get rid of Mother soon. Move on. Give them a new antagonist to fight. Young Avengers number 10. The four horsemen of the, of the Apocalypse Twins have made their move. If you like the four horsemen element of the uh, Apocalypse character, maybe check it out. Otherwise, just buy this from a friend. Scarlet Spider number 19. Pretty much skip it. If you, skip it unless you like unless you want to see Wolverine and Kane fight a bunch of guys. Captain America number nine. Please get them out of Dimension at Dimension Z. This has been going on for since the story began. Please let's have something new. Alright? Justice League Dark number 22. The team the heroes have split up into three teams. Halfway through Trinity War, and it is awesome. Highly recommend picking this up. Flash, number 22. We still don't know who the reverse Flash is. Almost thought it was Dr. Elias. It wasn't. If you love the reverse Flash, I highly recommend you pick up this, this issue and the first two parts. Aquaman, number 22. This issue was definitely better than the last one. Big revelation from the Dead King. Can't wait to see what can't wait to see what happens next. Definitely a buy. And Green Hornet number four by Mark Wade. Very nice, very great. If you want a comic book that's about all about crime fighting without any real super heroics or super villains, highly recommend this one. Okay, uh, that's it for my comic review this week. Sorry it was late. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, please, uh, if please, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Spider-Man 1991. Saying, see you later.